guess who I'm with? Tamin Sursok. She's basically Wonder Woman. No, 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 not even close. You're Wonder Woman because your husband's in Japan. Japan. No. You're that... here looking at doing this and looking after your two sons. So keep it coming. Yeah. Keep it coming. And you look good. <laughs> and in shape. Oh, wow. Your wow. Skin okay, looks okay. Good. No, no. This is what I'm supposed to be saying about you. <laughs> no, don't give me compliments. Better to give them receive. Okay. Well, let, just receive this. <laughs> Blogger, actress, designer of children's wear. Mother, wife, all round, nice human. I don't know about that. My husband might say otherwise. (laughs) (laughs) Take it. I'm going to take it. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to have you. Um, let me pour the tea. Hold on, are we rolling? Yes. Is this happening? Okay. He's Great. like, it's Let's happening. This. That's moment. perfect color tea. Drink the tea. It's not I'm one of those. Very funny about can't my tea colors. It. Too light is a bit stingy, I think. And too dark is too strong. Yeah. Okay. It's like in life, can't be too much, too little. Oh, good. It's a sweet spot. Yeah. <laughs> good. Tamin, thank you for joining me today. Thank for you. Some tea. I know thank you've had a you. huge day no, already. No, I mean I'm glad that I'm ending with you. The, the piece de resistance for the end. Oh, you have so full of confidence. I know because it's the last one. So yeah. I'm <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're like I'm getting out of here. Oh soon. my thank God. You're yeah. such a busy human, and that's what I, I want to talk about this because you do so many things. You wear so many hats. Yeah. And I want to talk about ambition and drive and juggle street okay <laughs> because all of this is you encapsulated into one human being i don't do all of them well at all the right at all at the same time okay. and that is my motto is you can have it all you just can't have it all at the same time 100 percent agree and it's like you can't be the best mother when you're working on a project and you can't be working on a great project when you're with your daughter so my biggest thing is just to be present yeah I think we live in a world where we're always thinking about the past or we're thinking about the future. That's why anxiety and depression are so big. And I think it's really important to bring it back to, and it sounds so corny, but our center and like who we are and being present in the moment and being here, not thinking about the next thing that we have to do. Mm -hmm. Um, That for me is what really motivates me to move forward. And a big thing for me also is gratitude. I think if you don't practice gratitude, you always feel like you're complaining or you're always unsatisfied. A situation will happen to two people and one person will be upset about it and one person will find like it's found time. The traffic. You're mm-hmm. in the traffic. Someone will say, oh my God, I can't believe I'm here and just be so stressed and almost give themselves a heart attack. And the other will say, well, this is found time. What can I do? Can I listen to a podcast? Like, what can I do? Can mm-hmm. I speak on the car phone to my husband? Something else. So it's 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 all perception. Yeah. Very wise for such a young really don't know woman. What I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I it's agree. A lie. I agree, and I think you learn that. The this older is the weirdest you get. hand. Like, who it's, holds their tea like this? I know, but it's such a cool. I know it's so cool I until know. it's like slips out and like burns you. No, but isn't that the thing about cool being cool? Like, it's, like, it's very inconvenient. S- s- yeah, I'm like <laughs> times. It's like shoes in help? general are like so inconvenient. So inconvenient. But I mean, so who cool. wants to wear high heels? No one. Speaking of, you've got a blog called. Heels and bottle and heels. Bottle and heels, sorry. And it's not vodka bottle, know. it's like milk bottle. <laughs> okay. Although sometimes it's no. You've got a four year old, yes. Phoenix. Yes. I feel your pain. I've got a five year old and a three year old. So oh my gosh, you're, you're my idol. I little. would never have had a second child that close. Yeah. People are like, why haven't you had a second child? I'm like, because I'm not crazy. <laughs> like, uh, why would I, when she's two, going through the terrible twos, why would I have another child? Like, that is nuts. That was Guy's idea. That was Guy's idea. Because he idea. has fun and you have to give birth. Mm. All of that. And then look after the child once they're born. <laughs> and then breastfeed. And yeah. then, yeah. That blog bur- was birthed, for want of a better word, out of um, frustration your frustration and, and sadness and the hardness of motherhood. Yeah. Because it's hard. It is. It is tremendously, overwhelmingly, disgustingly hard. But it's also she's the love of my life. Mm. It is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Mm. But what I don't like is women, we live in this fake world where we always put out our highlight reels. So no one ever talks about the struggles of what they're going through. So everyone feels very isolated and they feel very alone and everyone feels like they're a loser and they feel lonely and they feel disconnected. 
so Bottle and Hills was born out of, it was the genesis of it was just feeling like I had lost my identity and I wanted to connect with other women who were going through what I was going through that I couldn't find. Mm -hmm. So I was like, how can I start something to put women together instead of pit them against each other? Um, how can I make a difference in a small way? And it, and I think it did well or is doing well because it is when you do something with authenticity and you do it because it's less about yourself and it's more about someone else or helping somebody else, that's when people take notice, mm -hmm. when it's less about your own personal gain. Yeah. There's a, there's a piece that you wrote, I believe, on there about, um, it says, things that happen after you have a baby that's my favorite that one. No, no one talks, talks about. <laughs> this killed me. My top two fave points were, <laughs> you have to learn to cook whether you like it or not. Oh, every meal. Like and you <laughs> and in the beginning you want to be like uh, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow like p making all these like amazing meals and it's just like how y you have to cook mm -hmm. yeah there's nothing I know, you can do about it people have to be fed it's like a life source yeah, yeah I get it I am a terrible cook I'm a, I'm a good cook but I don't like to do it okay all oh, right yeah yeah I'm not good at it either and I don't like to do it so it's really bad I'm just I'm gets frustrated with me because I there's so many things that well I paint yeah but I just couldn't of be bothered course. to do it. Right. Ugh. You don't have time. <laughs> Let's be honest. Who can sit there for four hours painting, like, someone's nose? Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. The other point is you will hate yourself at least once a day. Oh, definitely in the at beginning. At the very least. Oh, in the beginning I was like, I'm the worst human being. <laughs> I remember we were at the, her first trip away. She was 10 days old or something. And I was like, I must continue traveling because then I'm no one. Like, I, I must continue my lifestyle, right? So we travel when she's 10, years old, 10 days old. And she was on the bed, and I went to the bathroom, and I came back. She'd gone. What? She disappeared, and I was like screaming, like, "What the? Heck? What's going on? What's going on?" She'd fallen behind the bed because her head was so big. She was born really big, so she flipped over behind the bed where the headboard was, and she was upside down with her legs up. <laughs> And I was hysterical. So I pull her up and it's like her head like bubbles up. And I'm like, we need to go to the hospital. She's like, Ugh. she's fine. Totally she was fine. totally fine. But I was like, I'm the worst mother. And then another story I have to tell you is I almost bit her finger off because she was having a fish finger and mm -hmm. she stuck her finger in the fish finger and she gave it to me. And I just, I was like, mmm, yum. And I chomped down and it was her finger. And she looked at me like, how? How dare you? You're my mother. You're supposed to protect me. You're <laughs> supposed to eat me, mom. <laughs> and I almost like, I think I almost damaged. Like it was almost gone. Wow. It was the worst thing I've ever done. Okay. You know what? We've all been there. I, I don't think I've been there exactly, but I, but I've felt. <laughs> I don't think I've lost my child. I felt and the her finger off, but Yeah, <laughs> it's true. You have to just talk yourself through it. Yeah. I think you just have to be like, okay, we're all I'm doing the make best a we can, mistakes. right? Yeah. And I think if we all just accept that. Like, what is perfection? There is no such thing as perfection. So if we just accept that life is messy and it's gray and it's never perfect. Mm -hmm. and, and we're not going to get it right every single day. And we're probably never going to even get it right. Like, what is right? You know what I mean? It's right true. to who? True. So it's like you just have to live the life that you want to do and just be happy with the decisions that you make. Mm -hmm. And bring them up how you think is the best way. Yeah, mom shaming and mom guilt is just boring. It's boring. I find it's so right. boring. And speaking of bringing up your kids in the right way, here's my segue. Yeah. Into reading eggs. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so good. I see. I see what you're doing there. What you're doing. Here's what we have in common, Tamin. Yes. We are huge fans of reading eggs. I'm a huge fan. Education from a very young age is really important to me. She goes to a very play-based school, um, which is all learning through uh, activities and illustrations. And, and that's exactly what reading eggs is. It's an online reading program from two to four, reading eggs junior. And, um, you know, it really helps them learn from an early age to, to advance their skills in reading. So it's and been, it works. It, it works. really, really yeah. works. Yeah. Not only I thought my kids are going to be the exception to reading, you know, maybe they'll yeah, never yeah, learn yeah, to yeah. read. Like they'll never learn. They'll yeah, figure it out. Yeah, truly. It does work. And yeah. so many other parents that I've talked to about it, almost everyone I know has it and uses yeah. it. And I mean, I, I, just found out, I, I just found out about it recently in the last couple of months and it's changed our lives. It's been amazing. And also you feel less guilty of what she's watching. Exactly. You know. Yeah, you feel less guilty handing over a yeah. device when you know that they're actually having fun and right, learning exactly. all at the same time. You feel like, oh, yeah. guilt. No. Yes. <laughs> Gone are those days. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. good. Big fans right here. Yeah. We we are advocates of, yeah. of... Educate your kids. Educate them. <laughs> Educate your 
Learning. So learning yeah. is good. Learning is good. <laughs> um, now, let's talk about your incredible career. You have, you've killed it. Let's be honest. Some days I feel like I'm doing a great job. Other days I feel like I'm failing. It depends on the day. Well, to us, it looks like you're doing <laughs> a great job. You started out in Home and Away, obviously, yep. in Australia, how we know and love you. Mm-hmm. And then you went to the bright lights of Hollywood and have landed some pretty major roles. Yes. Talk me through how that physically happens because I feel like as an actor, I'm not an actor, but if I was, yeah. that's yeah. the dream. You, you, you move to Hollywood and, and you make it and you get on a great yeah. show or a movie or whatever that's the dream but but so many people are trying there's a few ha- reasons they don't make tell it me, tell me one is it's 20 percent about talent and the rest is about fortitude and mm-hmm. resilience mm-hmm. i feel like if you are constantly putting friction out there and you're constantly you know people wait for somebody else to give you the answer and i yes i was lucky with with um uh, young and the restless and, and pretty little liars but my husband and I, from that opportunity, have created our own projects because it's it's really how much you want it. If you really want to be an actor, you need to wait. You need to stop waiting for other people to give you the answer that you're good enough, and you need to go and create a TV show. Go do a YouTube show. Now there's so many different outlets on how to to to, to make TV or movies or whatever. Mm-hmm. Go go to stage. Go go do something. Write something. Direct something. You know, I think what happens is people go over there and they go, oh, I'm going to do ten auditions. I'm going to be here for a year. If no one gives it to me, then I'm done. Well. No one's gonna to want to give you the your dream, like the biggest thing that's out there. If you're only gonna do it for a year, mm-hmm. you know it's, mm-hmm. it's, it takes a lot of time. And again, it's it's twenty percent, I believe, about talent, and, and the rest is about how hard your work. Yep. So and work right ethic place, is really right really time. important. Mm. Yeah. And how much you're creating and putting out there, I think. Yep. And putting yourself out there yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Like no one, because my hubby and I just finished this film with a great cast. People are going to see the work that we want to put out there and that we, we love and who we are as artists in a way. And, and that's when people, I think, start to, to, to notice what you can do. Mm-hmm. Would you say, because I wanted to talk to you about ambition and drive. And yeah. sometimes I think those words can be, I don't know, a little bit of a dirty word, like mm-hmm. especially as a woman, if you're ambitious. It's changing a little bit. I mean, I wish Hillary Clinton got in, but yes, it's changing. <laughs> So when we talk about ambition, mm-hmm. what, does that does that come into that fortitude that you're talking about? That sticking at it, working really hard. I think what it's really unfair that we call women working moms and men don't get called working dads. Mm-hmm. They're just dads, or they're just men. You know, I don't think I don't know why. Even ambition is a dirty word. I was born with them. Like I, I had to keep moving forward, or I would have died as a person. I think things are changing. I think women are now starting to have equal rights. I think we're starting to feel like we have a voice that we can really fight for. You know, little known point, which in in the states you might not want to talk about this, but like a tampon is tax, but yet Viagra is not. So what are we saying about women? You know, we're saying that there's so many things about them as dirty or or too expensive, or they shouldn't speak up. Whereas a, a man like that's that's there's no tax on like we we can pay for your lifestyle and how you want to get ahead but women you can't so i think it's changing and i think it starts with our kids it starts with your even sons and how to treat women mm-hmm. it starts with my daughter and how to treat herself mm-hmm. um and i think it's starting to change i think that we're seeing more models with normal sizes on the covers of magazines women are starting to speak out we almost had an american female president which would have been incredible for the united states um, I think those things are changing, and I think that women are starting to feel like once one woman does it, another woman feels like they can, and then they, that trailblaze of a path is starts to move forward. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said before, you wear a lot of different hats. You're you're a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. Your mom, your actor, you're working, your wife, like all of those things take up a lot of Time. hours in the yeah. day. If you could um, summarize, <laughs> because it's the billion dollar question that, that every woman, mother, mm-hmm. human, who's trying to get a lot of stuff done, yeah. dads even, yeah. trying to yeah. fit, fit in career and life. What's the balance? What's the juggle? What's the, how, how do we do this, Tam and Sersok? I pay so much less attention as I get older to the noise of everyone telling me what I'm supposed to do and I just trust my intuition. Mm. And I just, you can't have it all at the same time. Mm. So you say, how do you juggle it? Well, 
you just do what you're supposed to be doing at that moment and be present doing it. So you do your film and then you come back and you become a mom for the next three months or whatever mm -hmm. it is and you enjoy that and you do it with everything you got and then you stop. Well, you don't stop, but then if you go on a vacation with your husband for three days, take the vacation with your husband, mm -hmm. you know? free. You do it and don't yep. feel guilty. Like yep. you have to keep falling in love with your husband or there will be no foundation mm -hmm. for your children. Mm -hmm. You will have no family life if you don't have a strong relationship with your husband. Mm -hmm. You know, be in love and, and spend that time. And, and so it is all about doing it, you know, separately. And, you know, even Stella Phoenix, my clothing line, taught me so much about, you know, I was always, I was kind of doing that at the same time as like being with my husband. I would be like trying to fill orders. And, and I realized that I have to be doing Stella Phoenix and be working, designing, and doing that clothing when, when I have those moments to do that, and then and then put it away. Mm -hmm. Like I can't, cause, cause it will kill uh, everything, you know. Yeah. So it's it's important to just be doing it with your whole heart. Mm -hmm. So, and I want to send you some boys clothes. Oh, happily received, <laughs> happily happily received. Yeah. Now tell me, what would you say is the favorite part of your job? That I never know what's going to happen next. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I and mean, terrifying. We went, I've been, I went to Cambodia once and uh, they told me two days before. Now that wouldn't happen as much with a kid because there's a lot of plans you'd have to make for that. But, uh, but yeah, our movie got greenlit a couple of weeks before we started shooting. Yeah, that's so, so cool. Yeah. Is that also the least favorite part of your job? <laughs> I love adventure. Yeah. So I wish my husband came to me tomorrow and said, we're going to Japan. I'd be like, sure. Yeah. I don't live well in stability. Yeah. But my child needs stability. So I've had to grow through that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you so, think she's going to be following your path? I think she already loves it, which is problematic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to throw her in as a child actor, though. People have their own reasons why they do that, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm going to let her have her formative years. Yeah. Um, not being in front of the camera, there's so much time for that. Yeah. Agreed. You know. And what can we expect to see from you in the coming? I mean, I feel like there's nothing more you can do. I'm going to direct my first feature next year. Of course yes. you are. <laughs> of course. Sorry, I forgot that it was possible as well. Yeah. Amazing. And have another baby. Yes, go. I directed my short when I was pregnant. I felt so powerful that I would really like to be pregnant and then direct a feature. Amazing. Because I just think that there's, you just, like a tiger. You have so much life force. Yeah. That I, that's kind of my aim. Wow. <laughs> you go, girl. You're an inspiration. No, you're, you're an are. inspiration. No, you're oh my so, God. You're so wise for so, someone so young. I don't I've... take any of my advice. No, I do. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no, you've lived, you've lived a lot of life and you've experienced a lot of stuff and you've handled a lot of things. I yeah. think that, like I think Resilience. of somebody in Hollywood in these massive shows that you're doing and I just think someone like yeah. who does that has to handle themselves in a professional, yeah. mature way. Yeah. I feel like you've done that. I think my greatest thing, you know, I think everyone should see a therapist because they give you a lot of insight about yourself. But the person I see said that um, my biggest advantage is for, uh, resilience mm. and that I need to realize that you will keep rising like the phoenix, mm. like the phoenix rising if you just keep moving forward. Yeah. So. Love it. Thank Will you, you just keep on rising <laughs> forward, Tem and Sirsok? Thank you so much. Thank you for joining me for Thank tea. You. It's been Thank lovely you. That's been so you. fun. Oh, well, Wind. Cheers. 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 I'll be in Melbourne in, in like an hour. Yeah, of course you will. <laughs>